a grandma who's elbowing one of the characters and it looks like a devastating blow. Cool action is cool. Someone gets their arm literally cut off. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Mangaka Education Podcast. Today I'm going to be telling you about one of my favorite manga ever for dynamic action. This is going to be something that's enjoyable for readers because obviously cool action is cool, but also this is going to be great for artists and mangaka who are studying dynamic poses, dynamic angles, anatomy, and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be talking all about that today. For some background on me, I'm an author in the novels, manga, webtoon, and video game space. I run a studio that produces anime style stories professionally and builds franchises out of them. Make sure that you smash the like button, subscribe, and let's get right into the video. Today, we're going to be talking about the infamous manga, sort of infamous. Some people know it, some people, a lot of people don't know it. Sakamoto Days. Now, Sakamoto Days is in Shonen Jump. It's one of the most underrated slept on series, in my opinion. It's kind of like if John Wick became an old, chill convenience store owner. Like if he retired to be uh, from being an assassin to be a convenience store owner. With his family, he's trying to live his best life, but then he gets pulled back into the assassin world. He works together with like a telepathic and like this Chinese martial artist. And they're just like beating the crap out of like the entire assassination organization so that he can go back to living his normal life with his family. Now, story aside, let me tell you that the manga panels in this series are the craziest thing I've seen. Period. You can even look at the volume covers and you can see how dynamic the character art is. It really reminds me a lot of Jujutsu Kaisen, the style of dynamic action that this author uses. And there's just some of the craziest sequences in this manga. I mean, I'll give an example. This is probably showing on screen if you're watching this on YouTube. There's one sequence where someone gets their arm literally cut off and then he just flips around. He's like, I don't get I guess I don't need this anymore. He kicks the arm, which is still gripping the weapon that he was holding, and he kicks it back at his enemy like like it's a weapon. After getting his arm severed, like it's cr it's super cold. The manga is so cold. All right, let's get into why this is so dynamic and why this is so great of a manga before I continue on my fanboy streak. Let's talk about some of the key things that make Sakamoto Days one of the best action manga. Period. And we're gonna start off with one, the panel layout. The mangaka knows how to panel and this is something that's really good for, you know, introductory or beginner mangaka to study, which is ultimately like conversations and that kind of stuff. Slower build scenes will use a lot of panels on a page. Good example I'll show on screen. There's conversation if there's build up and they're using a lot of panels on the page to build up to those really big moments, which are either big speaking moments that are like hard hitting lines or action sequences because when it comes down to it those smaller panels are meant to build up to the bigger panel and those bigger panels sakamoto days uses really well to emphasize larger panels and big accentuated movements now if you study kisho tenketsu manga structure which is ultimately a storytelling technique that is used across asia you know that this mangaka is really good at implementing the 10 which is ultimately a twisting moment in a particular scene or sequence and he uses pages full of dialogue that have a lot of small panels to build up to those large your panels with the eventual twist on them. His panel composition is just so good. It's so good. Now we're gonna move on to two, which is dynamic angles. When you look at Sakamoto Days, the dynamic structure of just the covers alone really tells you what this author and artist is capable of. But let's take a look at these same dynamic angles in the actual manga pages themselves. Sharp angles really give information that we either one, normally wouldn't be able to comprehend because if you're doing a direct for you, a sharper angle can give you more information. Or it just gives us a more entertaining view of a punch or kick. I'm gonna provide an example here where we're doing a panel of a view from a higher angle from behind the opponent looking down and showing the main girl who's kicking upwards. This sharp angle really allows us as the viewers to see the expression of both characters in one dynamic panel. You know, you see one character, their expression as they're getting their ass whooped, and then you will see the other expression as they are being cool and doing the high kick. So that's a panel where we have a good example of something that's just a cool angle. It's a cool angle. But what about using sharp angles to depict more information? Now, here I'm using a panel where we basically see a view from a higher angle behind Sakamoto and a villain that he's trying to like basically ambush from behind and then we see that the guy who's being ambushed is throwing a bead that is bouncing off a wall the ceiling and then coming back around to attack Sakamoto
Komodo. And so this panel is actually really important because the angle is actually necessary here for delivering multiple streams of information to the reader. We see that Sakamoto is attacking the guy from behind. We see that the guy is bouncing a weapon off of multiple surfaces and it's coming back around to attack Sakamoto from behind also. And we wouldn't be able to tell that if it was just a front view shot. If it was just a normal front view shot, it would be a lot harder to depict that. And it would also be a lot less entertaining. Sakamoto Days has a great way of just depicting a lot of information in using those sharper angles. But in addition to that, those sharper angles just look more entertaining and more engaging the way that he implements them. And then obviously three, we're going to be talking about how Sakamoto Days uses the most dynamic poses in action that I've just seen, period. It looks so fluid. It looks so freaking clean. I don't even know how to say it. Basically, this author is just really good at making characters look like they're in motion. The characters never feel stiff. They just never feel stiff, right? That's something that you really want to avoid. It's very common in webtoons. It's very common in beginner mangaka or even illustrations. But ultimately, Sakamoto Days is so good at making characters feel fluid and constantly like moving in a way that feels so natural. I mean, obviously, you can tell that they're in motion because of the usage of speed lines right on the manga page but it's also a combination of sharp angles like we mentioned earlier and character composition and anatomy a lot of these characters are doing poses that we typically see in either a martial arts or parkour which are ultimately things that are very fluid motion i mean this manga is capable of making anything look good he even has this one panel which i'm sure is being shown on the screen right now of a grandma who's elbowing one of the characters and it looks like a devastating blow and that's just because he makes characters look dynamic the speed lines character that's having the delivered blow fully tweaking from force of the punch. He can make anyone seem like they're moving super fast. There's even a panel where Sakamoto, who's riding a bicycle, you know, looks like he's moving at like Mach 10 speed. It's crazy. Now I'm going to be showing a bunch of panels on the screen, just flashing them really quickly. And a lot of these are telling doing exactly what we just talked about. One, look at how he does panel composition. Things that are not important or more build up are using more, you know, using less panels that are smaller in size on the actual page. And then you see when they build up to the actual 10, the twist, or the, the big action moments, basically. And then in that case, they happen to be larger panels and all the, you know, all the buildup leads up to these larger, bigger panels. In addition to that, the action sequences that are on those actual big panels are one, having really dynamic angles. And then two, the characters themselves are also just in such dynamic poses. The anatomy is very good. The character design is very simple. Honestly, everyone just kind of looks like a very simple character. The characters aren't dorm anything very ostentatious or anything because one the care the manga has to be able to draw it over and over and over again in a very you know simple way but also because when you're putting these characters in motion it's a lot harder to put characters that are wearing a ton of like very flashy or detailed stuff in motion versus someone who's just wearing a shirt hopefully my editor has shown you a lot of really cool panels that you guys have been able to take a look at and study as a special note i will say that sakamoto days is just so good at delivering information to the reader in like one panel pull up another example here in this one panel i'm showing here, you can see that Sakamoto is blocking a knife on the bigger panel, and so he's saving his family using his knife. But at the same time, in the same panel, he's slamming the dude's face with a counter blow, right? And then in the background, we see his family is chilling and hanging out, which shows that they have no idea, basically, that he's beating the crap out of an enemy and protecting them. But on the other hand, his friend is also in the panel and he's and she's freaking out because she's like this guy's crazy and so you have like five different things going on all in one panel and that's just so much information to the reader right you might just glance over that but when you look at that you immediately know like five or six different things that are happening all in one panel all in one image and it's a very efficient way of using panel sorry i'm fanboying bro guys <laughs> i love this manga and i love this artist he's so good but yeah he's just so good at conveying information so take those it was three things but let's make it four things take those four things away from this video when it comes down to dynamic action, I really do think about those things, right? It's one, the sharp angles. It's the mastery of character anatomy. So characters feel fluid, right? You throw the right amount of blur or speed lines on it. And then you can have like a pretty strong panel. As long as the panel also conveys a lot of information, kind of like what Sakamoto Days does, which is telling you information on multiple things on a single panel and using those angles to, to give the reader a new perspective on what could have previously just been a direct front view shot. It's like, why would you not do a direct front view? Few shot. You can also do things from higher angles, lower angles, and all these other things also. You know, and when you tie that all together along with the panel composition of Sakamoto Days, this manga is one of the best out there in terms of like just action. And it's so good at depicting clear action, which is the best part about this. It's like I can read this manga page and I don't have to read back to understand what the hell did I just read. Right? A lot of manga, that's actually the case, which is like oh, I don't actually know what's going on here. People are fighting. Sakamoto Days, you can almost picture it like an anime or an animation 
animation or live action thing. It's very fluid and it's very clear. I think that's the most important thing is that how clear it is to the reader so that it doesn't break my immersion when I have to go and read back. When I compare it to something like, good examples like Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man, great manga. Love it. Fantastic. One of the most legendary visionaries in manga history. However, when uh, Fujimoto, who's the mangaka of Chainsaw Man, when he depicts action, like honestly, it's a little bit confusing to me. And that's because panels sometimes lack clarity. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's guts, there's like multiple buildings. The characters are not standing out amongst like the crazy amount of lines that they have on these really extravagant backgrounds. To me, Sakamoto Days feels like the superior in terms of pure depiction of action. And that partially is because of the clarity of the actual manga sequences themselves. People are gonna come after me. I'm comparing Chainsaw Man and Sakamoto Days. Again, they're both great. Sakamoto Days, in my opinion, has better action. The key thing that you should think about when you're reading your own sequences or you're reading manga in general as a reader or as a creator is ultimately, are you struggling to understand the choreography that's happening? Do you have to read back a few times? If you're reading back again, just to be like, wow, that was so cool. I want to read it again. That's cool. But if it's like, I don't really understand what just, what I just looked at. I'm going to go and read back again to try and understand what I just read. Then that means that there's a clarity issue, right? Clarity is, is super important. So try and make sure that when you're reading, if you're a mangaka out there, if you're making your panels, read over your panels again to see that if there's clarity, make sure that other people read your stuff to also make sure there's clarity. And, you know, Sakamoto Days, it just feels fluid. It feels right. It feels bad. And that's what we want coming out of an action manga. That's why, guys, Sakamoto Days is one of the most underrated action manga, period. Anyway, guys, sorry, I kind of went on a few tangents. I was kind of on script today, but kind of not. Hopefully, this was somewhat informative. If you did find it informative, make sure to drop a like, heart, wherever you're seeing this, and subscribe as well. And definitely let me know if you're interested in more manga or webtoon recommendations for either reading or studying, because, you know, they tend to go hand in hand. If it's good to read, sometimes there's a lot of good stuff to also study from a creator perspective as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Mangaka Education. If you are interested in some of the publications that I've done in the manga and webtoon space to see how I implement some of these skills in my own project, make sure to either Google Brandon Chen or check the link in the description for some links to my projects. I have a lot of stuff serializing right now, so your support on those serializations would be amazing. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in next week's video. Peace. <laughs>